Hello friends, welcome back to Patriot 6. This is part 3 in this series where I'm building my own airport from scratch from the ground up. In part 3 my primary focus is going to be airport aesthetics. This is where I will add buildings, fuel tanks, static aircraft, vehicles, the mesh, and the final vegetation cleanup. So with that, let's get started. Greetings and welcome to Patriot 6. I make tutorial videos for scenery building or modifications to scenery in Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 utilizing SDK. Different people at different levels of skill see these videos. You may be here because you're curious or you may already know the basics of scenery building. It is impossible for me to know who will click on a video. Because of the broad range of folks that view the videos, I include the basics in each video. This and all new videos will be built in chapters. You can find the chapters of the video in the description below. In addition, you can see the chapters on the video timeline if you want to skip the basic chapters. To build scenery in Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020, you must be in developer's mode. And this is a very simple process and I'll walk through it. First, you go to options. Go to General Options, you go to Developers, On, Apply and Save. Once in Developers mode, you will see a menu appear at the top. I refer to this often as the Developers menu. In addition to being in Developers mode, you must have SDK. And this is a very simple process. You go up to the Developers menu, you find the Help, you tick on Help, and then you tick on SDK Installer Core. And a window will open up and SDK will load in. And from that point, you can decide where you want the SDK. I'm going to tick off of this because I already have it. I put SDK on my C drive and I called the folder MSFS SDK. But you can place SDK where you want to place it. In addition to that, it's always good to go in and get the samples. And from the same help menu, you want to go down to samples. And again, you will download the samples. I'm going to stop it because I already have the samples. And once you download the samples, you can go into your SDK folder that you built. And you can find samples by ticking on the samples folder. And there's all kinds of samples here, but the one most often used is the one called Simple Scenery. Let's talk about the tools that we need to build scenery. In most projects, it's very simple. The items which you use to build scenery are typically in your scenery library already. There are exceptions though. If you are bringing a 3D model into the sim, that would be an exception. If you are using the Earth to MSFS tool, that is another exception. And on occasion, you may need a text editor. I will explain the reason for the text editor once I do a video where the text editor is needed. For starters, put a folder on your desktop that you will use as your working scenery folder. I have one here and I will show you what I have in it. All I have in it is a simple scenery folder. I downloaded from SDK and I do have a thumbnail. In the simple scenery folders that you download through this version of SDK, a thumbnail is not mandatory because there is a standard thumbnail within the scenery package. However, on all of my projects, I choose to have a thumbnail and it's your choice where you want to go with a standard thumbnail in the scenery folder or if you want your own. If you decide you want to make your own thumbnail, the thumbnail has to be the precise dimensions of this thumbnail I use, 412 by 170 pixels. No other size will work. So if you build your own thumbnail, please keep this rule in mind. Let's talk about the developer camera. 
the developer camera is something that is vital and something that you will use often. And to get to the developer camera, you go up to the developer menu, tick on camera, and tick on developer camera. Operating the developer camera is a lot like operating the drone camera. So I'll show you the keys that we use to operate the developer camera. If we want to drop, we hit the F key. If we want to rise, we hit the R key. If we want to go left, we use the A key. And if we want to go right, we use the D key. If we want to go forward, we use the W key. And if we want to go in reverse, we use the S key. There's also some numerical keys that you can use. On the number pad, the four key will spin you. And the six key will spin you in the opposite direction. The eight key will tilt your camera up. And the two key will tilt your camera down. Occasionally when you're building scenery, your azimuth will get off. So that's very easy to correct by using the seven key or the nine key. And then you can correct your azimuth. You can also use the mouse and freely move around. By holding down the left alt key and by using your left mouse button, you're able to move anywhere you want to move. Also, you can use the mouse wheel to zoom in or out. Almost always, this is a process I go through. I'll tick on the developer camera. I will drop to the ground using the F key. Then I will use the left Alt key and the left mouse button to make sure I can spin in small areas. That is the fine control of the camera I'm looking for. What I don't want is this. You see what happened there? As soon as I got in and I used my mouse button to move, look how far I am from my aircraft. So again, to the developer camera, drop down with the F key, and with the left Alt key depressed and the left mouse button, make sure you can make minute movements. And now you're good to go and ready to use the developer camera. To begin part three, the first step is to open the tools and bring up the project. Of course, I'm in developer's mode, so I'm going up to the Dev menu, Tools, and open the Project Editor. And with the Project Editor open, I'm going to Project, and open the project. Navigate to the Working Scenery folder. Navigate to the project, which is KNSS. Open the folder. Drop down to the bottom XML and open. And once the project opens, I can drop down to the project right here on the project editor. Tick on it. Reveal the scenery BGL. Tick on the scenery BGL and up on the inspector, I'm going to load in editor. You can already see the airport loaded in, but I'm waiting on the objects to load up in the scenery editor. Okay, the scenery library has now loaded in. Let's discuss the changes I made since I completed part two. Building taxiways are very time consuming, but I believe in part two, you got the gist of how it works. However, I was not satisfied with the taxiways, so I wanted to clean the taxiways up a bit. Now to do so is very time consuming. It took hours to clean the taxiway up, and I certainly do not want to make a video of that length, and I don't think you want to sit through a video of that length. 
you can see that I added options in all the locations, whereas an aircraft can get on or get off at any location without any issues. I did add the taxiway that I spoke of in part two and brought the taxiways all the way out to the tarmacs on both sides. When you put junctions in taxiways, it can get a little cluttered in terms of the striping. I did the best I could. It's not perfect, but I do have some striping issues. When I was building the project originally and looking at the taxiways, I found some troublesome locations. And I believe right here is a trouble spot. So I'm going to move down here and take a closer look. Yes, that looks like a bumpy ride. So let's see if we can smooth this out a bit. To smooth this out, I'm going up to the Objects window. I'm going to tick on Polygon again. And I'm going to draw a polygon around this area. And with the polygon completed, I'm going to view Properties. I'm going to tick on Terraforming. And I don't need a huge fall off distance, so I'll bring that fall off distance down some. Now I haven't changed anything. All I've done is created a terraforming polygon. And I'm hoping this smooths out the area without any other work. seems improved now so I think we're okay. I'm going to check the edges and make sure it didn't do anything weird. There is a dip here, but I believe that the fall off will cover that. And if you've been flying at all in Microsoft Flight Simulator, you do run into your share of dips and bumps and taxiways. That's part of it. I want to take a good look at this area here because in real life, this is a creek. And I have concern there may be some rust spots in this, so I'm going to take a look at it and see if that's the case. There are a few, so let's see if we can do the same thing here with the polygon and smooth this out a bit. Same process on properties, going to terraforming. You can see the ground flattening out. We don't need the fall off distance this great, so I will bring that in some. Now I'm going to take a look and make sure I didn't adversely affect anything else. As far as I can tell, this is pretty good. Now I'm going to do the same thing on the concrete that I laid earlier in part one or part two, I don't recall. You will notice the concrete is not very even. It's following the terrain. And this is going to be a problem when I set buildings here. So I want to see if I can smooth this concrete out some. Terraforming. It looks flat. Now I want to make sure I didn't adversely affect the runways.
Okay, as far as I can tell, this is going to work. Make sure this is all flat. And the main reason you want it to be flat is because the buildings are going to be set to snap to ground. And if they're on uneven ground, then part of the building could be up in the air and part of it below the terrain. So making all of this concrete flat is the best scenario for when I add buildings. I'm going to cover all of this, so I'll draw the polygon for it. And I'm going to select terraforming. I think the ground is reasonably flat now and we can start setting some buildings. First I'm going to save the scenery. I own a large amount of payware airports and because of that it gives me options that you may not have. I can reuse objects in the payware airports. Here I'm going to use objects from Teterboro Airport which I purchased and it's going to be really cool because it's going to work perfectly over here for this side of the airport. I'm planning on this being the commuter side where commuter services can work. Before we do that there's something I want to do. I noticed this earlier and I had it slipped my mind. But the lake should extend to this creek, so I'm going to draw a polygon real quick and add water. Now I need to view the properties. And on the properties window, I'm going to select water and lake is probably appropriate. Now, that looks a lot better. So back to adding buildings. I'm going to scenery on the objects window. And I've made notes of the objects I want to use. I'm going to use KTEB Tower. And now I'm going to have to use a translate and rotate on the gizmo to put everything in its proper location. So with one object, I was able to grab some nice buildings for the airport here, particularly on the commuter side. We have FlexJet. And signature air. And these buildings look really nice at night, so I'll give you a sneak peek. That saves a lot of time. And now I'm going to add a hanger. And in my trial run, hanger 05 seemed to be one I liked. And with the gizmo, I'm going to put it in place. And I'm fine with that placement and I have room to add a few more so I can just tick on this object and duplicate and it will be in the same configuration same size as this one I'm going 
to do one more. I duplicate. Right, I feel like this side is covered. At least at this time, I'm going to save the scenery. And now I'm going to move over to the east side. Looking for Hangar 09. And this is an open hangar. This is the one I want. And this came from a library package inside FlatsimTO, so it's easy to get. Let me spin this around. And this is an open hangar. And I can actually place an aircraft in this hangar. And I'm going to make another one of these by duplicate. So it's at the same orientation. We can see the concrete floor, so that's good. If I'm not mistaken, these work pretty well at night too. I like that. If you've watched my developer camera tutorial before, when I speak of the azimuth getting off, well here is a case where the azimuth is getting off with me working scenery. So hitting the 9 key will help. Alright. Hangar 165 I believe is a pretty large hangar. So I'm going to place it now. Give me an idea of where everything else needs to go. And rotate it into place. Try Gen Hangar 06. I want to be too close, as you can tell, this is a taxi path, so I want to preserve the taxi path. I'm just going to duplicate this a few times. This is General Hangar 09. Just had a change of mind. I think I'm going to add one of these over here. So I'll duplicate that one. I'm going to use this same hangar here and add some in this area perpendicular to this one. I duplicate it and now I'm going to spin it around and get it in the proper orientation. Leaving room for my taxiway. I think I'll slide this one to the left a bit. I think at this time I'm going to add some fuel stations. Maybe here is a good spot. I found a couple objects that I like, so I'm going to type them in. It's MVR fuel tank. And now I'm looking for a silo. There it is. I might as well add a fuel truck. I believe the one I selected is a shell truck. And this comes from the Jackson Hole Airport I purchased. Looks like a decent parking spot. So I'm going to add fuel stations over here. And I'm using fuel station object 01. It's a good place, I believe. I want to make sure if I have a fire, it takes all this out. I'm just kidding. Let's make a few duplicates. Yeah, for convenience, I probably need to add a fuel station over here also. So let's add some fuel tanks to feed these. Fuel cylinder.
Now that I'm satisfied with the position, I can duplicate this a few times. Let's place a few over here to feed these pumps. It doesn't look like it matters which side it's on. So that's good. Now add some duplicates. It's been a while so I should probably save the scenery and then I'm going to add fuel over here. I need a fuel truck. I can grab the corner here and extend the concrete. Now I'm going to add a silo. In fact, I'm going to add two of these. Place some fuel stations on each side. I will duplicate. Okay, that seems to be orientated pretty good, so I'm going to duplicate. Let's add some fuel cylinders now. And get it orientated. Once I'm satisfied, I'll just duplicate. And duplicate another. Now I'm going to place a fire truck. Again, something reused out of my scenery library. Let's grab some security vehicles. Probably need to add some regular vehicles. I'm going to grab the car line 7C. 7 looked too small, so I went for 16. And now I need to add a rotating beacon, and this looks like a good area for it here. I was able to find a rotating beacon tower, and this seems to be an appropriate location for it. The thing is about this tower is it doesn't work at night. That's not cool, but I found a rotating beacon that I can use. It's EDJA beacon, so I'm going to add. Sitting on the ground is not what I want, so I'm going to view the properties. Select the beacon, remove snap to ground, and I'm going to raise this up and position it.
looks well positioned. Let's see how it looks when the light's down. And on the dab menu options, I'm going to restart the sim. Good. And I'm going to pause the sim again. Now I'm going to find some static aircraft. And over here on our commuter services, I'm going to add a CRJ. And to do that, you have to get off of scenery and move to sim objects. And then retype CRJ. And I'm looking for a CRJ private. Here is the CRJ private. I'm going to add and it's going to take it a minute to pick up the textures. And I know the wings are not showing, but it will ride itself once I build the package and come to the airport. I'm going to remove snap to ground and lift it up a bit to see what the wingspan looks like. That gives me an idea. Now I'm going back to snap to ground. I think I'm going to add various jets still in objects. An interesting livery. I think I'll use that. Not duplicate and add a twin. I'm going to add some small aircraft, just various liveries. A couple TBMs would be nice. Once I save and build the package, these will come up and sit on the ground. I believe you get the point now. You can just put as many static aircraft as you want. I'm going to save the scenery. Now I'm going to place some lighting. I like to dim it down a bit where I can still see, but the light be low enough that the lights will come on. On the objects menu, I will go back to scenery. Now I'm going to type in mast. And I'm looking for a mast type 4. And once I get it selected, I need to rotate it to the direction I want it to face. And with translate, move. Once I have it in place, I can then duplicate.
I did forget something. Save the scenery. I'm going to move this in the hangar and see how it looks. Go back to Sim Objects. Find a CJ4. There are airport lights I can use, so I'm going back to scenery. It's under lamp, and you can find it as airport building lamp. Now I'm going to place some smaller street lights and you can find those under lamp. A single should do it. And now I'm going to place the ground textures. This will take many polygons and it will take almost perfection on my part and it's going to be a very long process drawing out the polygons. So I will pause the video at this point and pick it up once I had the polygons in place. Okay, welcome back. I have placed all of my textures in all of the little areas. It took several hours to do, but I saved the last one for you to see so you understand how I applied these textures. It's the same thing I did in part one if you followed that, but in case you skip this part of part one I'll show you here so I've now ticked on the polygon the last polygon where I will add the ground texture and I'm going over to the scenery editor view and properties and now I'm going to bring up the material editor and on the material editor I'm going to a sobo ground and it's grass musa again I don't know if I'm saying that right or not but close enough going to tick on it and drag it to the materials and now that the grass musa has been placed into the polygon I will exit out the materials and I'm going over to the properties menu and I'm going to change the color so I'm going to take red to 96 I'm going to take green to 107 and I'm going to take blue to 76 and that's a color that I've selected that relatively matches everything around. Of course you see the tiles and the tiles don't look very natural. So over in the properties window I'm going to raise the tiling up to what looks appealing and that looks pretty good. And the next step I'm going to save the scenery. On the project editor I want to tick on the airport folder which I have and not be on scenery and you can see the information in the inspector that's good and I'm going to build the package. With the package built, I'm going to X out of the console. I'm going to remove the tools. I'm going to bring up the community folder. I'm going to bring up the package. I'm going to open up the working scenery folder. Open up the KNSS folder. Find packages. Open. Here is the package. I'm going to copy and I'm going to paste into the community folder. 
And as we can see, the package is now in the community folder. So I'm going to restart Microsoft Flight Simulator and pick up the package. And now with MSFS restarted with the package in the community folder, I want to go to the world map and see if I can find the airport. KNSS. And here we go. And we have our start locations. Let me change the weather and change the time. And let's fly and take a look. There's the windsock and it looks great. As I predicted, the static aircraft are sitting on the ground like they should be. We can see the aircraft I place in the hangars, the fuel truck, the fuel tank, the cars, the fuel stations, the smaller hangars over here, and the fuel stations and fuel tanks. Let's look at the west side and we see the static aircraft. Apparently these models only work close up, which is a shame because that's a beautiful aircraft in my opinion. There's a CRJ we added. There's the fuel tanks and the fuel stations. Of course the lighting and the larger fuel tanks in the fuel truck. The fire truck I placed. The cars in the rear. Fuel stations and fuel tanks, more cars. I think the textures look fine. Tastes vary, so you may want something different, and that's fine. And you can see the water that I fixed earlier now blends in extremely well with the lake, as it should. And the beacon tower is there. Also added some additional street lights all the way up to this highway and all down through here. So let's turn the lights down and see how things look. The airport lighting looks good. You can see the building lights I added. I really like these airport hangars and as I said earlier you can find them on FlightSimDO. I was going to add lighting in the open hangar but I don't have to because it's already there. So that is a neat hangar. The buildings I used from Teterboro really look great. See the additional street lighting that I added? The rotating beacon that I selected apparently doesn't have a very long range. Maybe there's a better rotating beacon out there that I need to look for, but let's get closer and see if it works. And it works, it just doesn't have much range. Not bad. This is actually the most extensive taxi work that I've ever done. But the point is, if I can do it, and I've never built an airport of this size before, then you can do it. I like everything that I see so far. Let's turn the lights back up. And this will conclude part three. I plan to make a part four, and hopefully it's the last part. In part four, I'm going to be placing parking ramps on the west and east side tarmacs. I want to place a helipad, and we will see. I believe SU-11 is supposed to come tomorrow. 
an SU-11 is supposed to have more helicopter support, and perhaps there will be a heliport start location. But if that doesn't come in SU-11, I already know a workaround to add a start location for a helipad. And the last thing I want to do in part four is add ILS to runway 32. Learn how to make the tower communicate with the aircraft. And my goal is to make this a completely useful airport, one you can fly in and fly out of and have all of the things that you come to expect from an airport. But until part four comes out, I thank you for watching part three. Hopefully you watch part one, part two, and I hope to see you soon. This is Patriot 6 saying see you in part 4.